Hey everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I've got a new project for you with one of my recent sets from Gina K Designs, Puppies Galore, and I've got yet another project that you can do that is perfect for these times of coronavirus that we're living in. Showing you today how you can make a little mask for your different puppies that you can create from this elemental dog set. It's got this little bandana in it that is gonna allow you to either paper piece this with some pattern papers, colored cardstock, or creating your own patterns for that mask. And this is going to work for either one of those dog faces. So um, I've got the one body in this. You could actually use it on this one as well. So there's the two different bodies, but on these two samples, I use just this one. And then you can use either face to cover it up with that same bandana. And I'm gonna use this face so that I can show you with some different ears, two that I don't think that I've used on another project. But look through my playlist so that you can see some other ideas of different kinds of dogs that you can make with this set. In addition to the Puppies Galore set, you're gonna to wanna to have some cardstock. So today I'm using some of the Gina K Pure Luxury. I have got the Turquoise C. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches. And we are just going to fold this at five and a half. Or you can grab that score buddy or scoring board and just score it at five and a half and give it a quick fold. The cardstock that I'm using for our mat, I've got some of the Gina K Layering Weight Pure Luxury White. This is three and three quarters by five inches. That's just gonna layer right on here with a little bit of the Gina K Tape Runner. And to create that white rim on here, I actually cut this out, but I decided that we're going to use a little bit of her purple tape and we're just going to stick this down on this self-healing mat for doing our sponging. We'll pull that away and it's gonna leave that just perfect reveal there. Got the Misty for doing our stamping and or some acrylic blocks, just something to put those stamps on. The ink pads that I'm using today, I've got the Gina K Designs Jet Black Amalgam. I've got the matching, let's see, this one's actually Ocean Mist. Ocean Mist or Turquoise Sea, either one will work for the sky. And then some of the Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus. So I'm going to show you how we can sponge up this quick little scene. I didn't do it on both cards, but I want to show you this one because it's just so cute to give it kind of a sense of time and place outside. Um, some kind of cardstock for doing that bandana. So this is from the Bold and Blooming Pattern Paper Pack that she sells. That's that piece that has the hearts on it. I can also show you one on just some colored cardstock where we can use some of these small elements like the heart, the bone, the ball to create your own little puppy patterned paper. Puppy pattern paper. Need some scissors for cutting out that bandana. Just a few markers for coloring it. I think I'm gonna make it look like King Charles Spaniel today. One of my friends has one, it's so cute. So I've got the Arteza 625 and 153. Uh, a white pen if you want, that's optional. So I think that's everything. Oh, and I might use some of the um, Arteza Inconic um, fine liner pens to do some blades of grass. So that's what I did on my other one. So I will tell you the colors that I end up using on that when we create the scene. So let's begin by stamping out this dog. And let's see, maybe we should, I've, I've used both of the bodies. Actually, no, I'm gonna use this one because I wanted to do, I had kind of a specific idea for this particular layout. All right, so just pull this off. This purple tape is repositionable. So I will show you how to get that stuck down and make a nice, nice clean mat all the way around. So I'm gonna put this just right about there and make sure that's stuck down. Do our stamping. So you wanna start with the body first and the reason for this is the head can be cocked in all different directions, but you wanna make sure that it looks like the paws are going parallel with the bottom of that mat. You don't want it to look like it's off at an angle. You wanna have it seated. Then we'll put on our head, then we'll put on our ears. So that's the way that you always wanna work with elemental stamps. So you start with the large stamps first, and then you work outwards towards the smallest stamps to build the image. So we're gonna go ahead and ink this up with the black, okay, let's 
press all over, open that window. If you need to do it again, you could do it one more time. And you could also do this with the, the no line coloring technique with a lighter ink if you prefer. But I kind of want this to look like a storybook illustration and see my outline on this page since we're going to have a nice blended scene, but it's not going to have too much detail on it. So I kind of like having just that, that black outline. So now we're going to do this little face. And I'm going to kind of have it just cocked to the side and you want to place it so the edges of the face are touching the neck and it's very easy to connect those if you do end up stamping it with a little bit of a gap you can just grab a black pen or that could also be covered up with the little collar or the face mask all right so stamp that pick that up and Missed a little bit of the nose, so I'm just going to do this just real quick, just a little bit more. I missed some of the eye there. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take just these floppy, kind of silky, furry ears that look like a spaniel. Okay, so we've got the right and the left ear, and those are going to go on just like that. So the edges of those ears are touching the top and the side of the head and you can stamp both of these at the same time or you can do them separately if you wish but I just I prefer to just stamp it once and ink it once so go across so that you're not getting ink down in the middle of the door but if you need to you can grab a little towel to wipe that off okay so cute okay all right, so now let's just do some really simple coloring on this. And you can use your bullet tip or your chisel tip. So I just wanna color these ears in really quickly. And I'm gonna do kind of two layers there at the bottom. Make sure that you can see that. I hope that was in the frame. And you just want to kind of color in circles so you don't have lines, although the lines on this would just follow the contours and just the little folds, individual hairs that I made to create texture on these ears. So I'm going to just go back in on the bottom of the ear and then just kind of do some flicking strokes, pulling it up, and that's going to make that look more hairy and shaded there. Okay, and then they have just a little bit around their eyes. I should have had that page pulled open. What they look like. Oh, I can't remember if it's on the bridge of the nose or not. Might need to come back and do that. I'll just I'll just fill it in. I don't remember what their dog looks like. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to do just a little bit down here. Kind of color the little bib and the chest. I don't want to do this part. Whoop, got out of the line there. Trying to stay out of the way so that you can see all of this. And so I should have peeked around my hand. And so I want to go over this again so that it is darker on this side where the little puppy is leaning over. Oh, Sadie, and I can hear my cat out there. Sounds like Will let her out of my room. That's where she goes during videos. Okay. Probably should have left the chest open white, but I didn't. All right, that's all right. And I'm just going to color a little bit of this so that we have that little tail tip of the tail open white all right and you're not going to see the little tongue if you're going to be putting this mask on so just keep that in mind okay and then you might take your gray marker and just go down the side of the face although you're not going to see it underneath the mask but i'm going to do just a little bit of this underneath where it's going to be sitting in the grass and just a little bit under the tummy too okay so this is just the most basic coloring and shading. So I wanted to make it more about the mask and about doing that little blended background. And I'm gonna come over here just a little bit because if we imagine the light coming from this direction, it's 
just going to be over on this side. Okay. All right. Just a little bit down the side there. Okay. A little bit right there. A little bit right there. Okay. And this is going to get covered up in the grass. Okay. So let's do a little bit of grass here. So I'm going to grab just a couple different greens. And I think I'm going to use, start with this 161 so there's 120 in here tons of different colors look at all those different shades of green you have so i'm just going to do just some quick little strokes and i'm having those little blades come in all different directions you don't want them all straight up they're just going to be going back and forth this way and that you kind of want them to look like they're just sticking up in between the little paws underneath and that's going to be coming up onto the belly and a little bit around and in front of those little feet you can put a little few back here just kind of to create some depth okay and then i want to take one more green just so that you have a little bit of variety and i'm not looking to see which colors i'm grabbing that's a little more olive than i want actually i have a color chart over here and this shows all the different ones. Let me see if I can find the 150. That's a nice one with that fresh asparagus. I'll put it. Don't want to spend too much time on this though. Let me try this one. I think that's the one I just grabbed. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay, so just you're gonna just have those different colors. Maybe a springier green. Hang on, I'm sorry, I should have had them set aside. Kind of had some different things come up this morning I wasn't intending. All right, okay, that's good, that's enough for that. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna do the blending. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm gonna use one of the life-changing blending brushes on this. So I'm going to take this blue pad and I just want to go off Sadie, I'll be out in just a second, sweetheart. Okay, so what I'm gonna do before I open this up, so let me just stick this down to my surface. I know, Sadie. I know. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up on my mat and this is gonna help me get this straight. So I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And I love how you can see through this tape so you know you're getting a nice straight edge there. And it's about even. And this tape can be reused for something else. The next thing that you want to mask. And I'm having it crisscross and go over the other side just to kind of protect my work surface. And so that I don't, don't blend that ink past where I want it. I know, Sadie, you're supposed to be back in my room, my bedroom. Okay, all right, so we're gonna start with our lighter ink first and do the sky. So I am going to blend this, and I can't remember if I washed it the last time that I did it. Might have a little bit of green on there. Clean this off really quickly. Yeah, it's pretty green from the last time I used it. So these can be cleaned. There we go. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna go in here just very lightly to create some sky around the puppy. And without doing any blending or without filling the whole thing in, those white areas are just gonna suggest clouds, okay? So just a little bit it's a little darker than on my first card because it still had some of that green ink. I got most of it off. And really want to concentrate that as close to the edge as you can, and then that'll give you that nice, crisp edge. Kind of want to have that in all the corners just a little bit so that it'll create that border. Okay, and now let's do our green. And we're gonna go heavier with the green because we want the grass to look more solid than that sky, okay?
And if it looks a little fingerprinty down there, I was eating some popcorn when I was cutting this. I think I got a little bit of grease on my mat. And if you wanna cover up the puppy so that you're not getting any sponging on there, you can, but I'm not. And one of the reasons it goes a lot faster this way, but also you're gonna have some of the color of that grass overlapping and also reflecting onto your dog. So it is totally fine to have some of that green overlapping the white there, okay? And it's gonna be kind of modeled anyway because of the shadows of the trees. So I'm not worrying about getting that perfectly blended and smooth. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to peel this away and then you've got that nice white edge there. And it looks just like a little painting or a little postcard. And then we didn't have to use any extra paper. So this is just a two layer card, but now it looks like a three layer card. So we've got some of that tape runner and just going to center that onto the card base. And you can also take, I'm gonna grab just a little black pen here. So I wanna add a, a little bit more detail. I was gonna add just some little, made some little dandelions earlier. And all I did there, like you can just draw kind of like a little, little puff ball or one of those just like very simple little five petal flowers that you used to draw in kindergarten. It just, just kind of creates more of a scene there. And I'm gonna use that white pen and just go in just to make that pop a little bit more on the green. And I forgot to fill in the eyes with a little bit of brown. Let me do that. You can take your white pen if you end up kind of losing some of the highlight and the eye from your stamping. You can just do a touch of that. So now let's go ahead and create that little mask. So we're going to take this little bandana stamp. And this was drawn to actually fit or stamp underneath it. But we're going to go over this with our pattern paper. So I'm gonna stamp this just directly. Not gonna use the MISTI, I'm just gonna use my acrylic block. Move away this purple tape. So you can peek through these clear stamps to find which part of the pattern you want to show up in the paper piecing, especially when it's a small piece, okay? And it's open there at the top because you were stamping it around underneath the dog. So when you cut it, you have the ability to go as high or as low as you want it. So on this one, let me show you the couple of the different little samples. I went straight across and that left more of the bridge of the nose, but the nose is still covered the way that you would want a mask to do. But if you want it to be on this dog's face because the bridge is shorter than this one you need to go a little bit higher so it'll cover the nose okay so you can maybe start by going up and around just to make sure that it's going to cover the whole thing and then if you want to have it be go a little bit lower you can and you can make it kind of a little more pointed there in the middle and then it kind of looks like it's sloping back down over the bridge of the dog's nose, just like that. And then if you want, you can curve that off so it looks less like a bandana mask and more like one of the fitted masks. You just want to make sure that it is covering up that little tongue there. You wouldn't want your tongue sticking out of your mask. Okay, so now all I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you this other one that I did. This one was stamped on some of the blue denim cardstock, and then I just used this white pen to draw some little paisleys on it. So that was a little make your own. Oh, and I said I would also show you one before I attach that. Let me just show you on this colored cardstock. So let's grab one of 
the little images on there and kind of make it like just like a little dog themed one. So I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the bones a little big for just that small piece. I think I'm just, I'm just going to use the little hearts on this. So I'm going to just stamp here, here, here. And then you can color these in if you want. And then same way, you would just cut this out. So I'm going to cut this one out, and then I'm just going to show you it again layered over this bandana. Okay, so we're just cutting right on the edge there. And then it would really add to the effect to make these hearts pop to color them with something. But see, that would go on just like that. So you see how I cut them just a little bit different. So this one was a little bit more rounded and this one was a little bit more straight. But just so cute. Be so fun to send this to your friends right now, the ones that have dogs. Keep your dog safe as, safe as well. And on this one, there's a little stay in here for Stay Possum. So I just went ahead and used one of those Inconic pens, the black one, to write Stay Safe on there, adding my own safe. So there is that little mask. So let me know in the comments uh, either which of these cards you prefer or what kind of dog you have or your favorite breed. Show them like that, A, B, or C. I hope you're having a good time, whether you are at home or back at work or um, not working right now. I hope you're able to get back to work soon, but whatever you're doing, that you're just trying to make the most of this time and staying positive. Didn't, didn't mean to make that pun, but sorry, not sorry. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.